All right, so today we're going deep on something uh, pretty crucial for the U.S. Air Force. Yeah. Aerial refueling for those workhorses, you know, the F-16s and the F-15s. Oh, yeah, got to keep them flying. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, folks might wonder, right, like, how do these jets manage to... Stay up there. Yeah, stay up there for ages and, you know, operate so far from home. Global reach. Global reach, right? Yeah. So we're going to break it all down, the how, the who, the why. The whole nine yards. The whole nine yards and maybe a few things you didn't know. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's start with the how. Okay, the how. So for F-16s and F-15s, uh, you're mainly talking about the flying boom system. Right, the classic image. Yeah, you've seen it in the movies. Big old boom coming out. Right, so first things first. Communication. Ready, chatter, get everyone on the same page. Make sure they're talking. Then the fighter has to maneuver into position. Carefully, I imagine. Oh yeah, about 50 feet behind and a bit below the tanker. Like a delicate dance. It is. And then the pilot calls out, ready pre-contact, mm -hmm. and they pop open that refueling door. Makes sense. Got to get ready to receive that fuel. Right. And this is where it gets really interesting. They use these pilot director lights, PDLs. I've heard of those. Yeah, they're visual cues basically helping the pilot fine-tune their approach to connect with the boom. So we're talking tiny adjustments. Right. Millimeter precision. So it's not just about the pilot's skill then, right? No, no, it's a whole system. Yeah. You've got the pilot's training, of course, thousands of hours in simulators. Right, practice makes perfect. And then the aircraft itself has sophisticated flight control systems to help maintain stability. Like a little computer brain helping out. Exactly. And then once the fuel transfer is done, it's the same deal in reverse. Smooth disconnect. Close that refueling door and then depart safely. Back to the mission. Right. So. Uh, who are these flying gas stations we keep mentioning? Right, the tankers themselves. So for decades, the real workhorse has been the KC-135 Strata tank. Old, reliable. Yeah, flying boom only. And then there's the KC-10 Extender. That's a bigger one, carries way more fuel. How much are we talking about? Uh, the KC-135 can offload around 200,000 pounds of fuel. The KC-10 closer to 356,000. Wow, that's a whole lot of fuel. It is. And the KC-10 is dual capable, meaning it can do both boom and probe and drogue refueling. Ah, so it can refuel more types of aircraft. Yeah, even some of our allies use it. And speaking of newer tech, there's the KC-46 Pegasus. Right. Also dual capable, but it's had its, uh, its hiccups, you could say. I've heard about that, yeah. There was that incident during Exercise Turbo Weasel where a KC-46 actually damaged an F-16 during refueling. Oof. That's yeah, and another incident during a presidential visit refueling an F-15. Yikes. So still working out the kinks. Yeah, they're getting there. It can transfer about 212,000 pounds of fuel. So somewhere between the other two. Right. So uh, where and when does all this happen? Yeah, good question. Usually you're looking at altitudes between 18,000 and 35,000 feet. Up in the sky. And speeds vary depending on the aircraft. Right. F-16s typically refuel between 250 and 300 knots. That's nautical miles per hour for anyone listening. Right. But it can change a bit depending on the tanker, like the Airbus. A330 MRTT. That's the one some of our allies use, right? Exactly. Now, F-15s, they tend to refuel a bit faster. Interesting. Yeah, 300 to 350 knots. Usually more stable at those speeds. Makes sense. So, now the big question. The why. The why. Why this whole system in the first place? Well, I mean, the boom system, that's because it can pump fuel way faster. Right. 